for that Moho interview. Robert C. Mohol is the general manager of WOI, AM, FM, and TV. We've been talking about television, what the past was, what the present is, and some slight intimations about the future. <coughs> Let's go on to the, the question of what the future holds for television, Bob. Well, I suppose I, a lot of things a person could say. I could glibly say I don't have a crystal ball, and anybody that knows the future of television doesn't know the future of television, because nobody does. I could say, well, I'm an expert on that. Identifying an expert is somebody from the East with slides. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> or I could, uh, I could say, well, this sort of reminds me of the two very elderly gossips that were talking with each other on the phone, and one of them finally said, well, Gertie, I better hang up now. I've already told you more than I know about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you've told us more than <laughs> so you know I about think, it. Go I ahead. Think that, I think that anybody, that, anybody that's dealing with a, a medium that has developed so quickly over, well, we, we say 30 years, but let's face it, so terribly quickly over the past two years, past five years, that we've, we've got to kind of put this into perspective a little bit. Get back to the basic of saying, well, what do we understand television to be? Well, simply, it's a medium of communication. And uh, beyond that, it's an electronic system of transmitting messages over wire or, or through the air. And we also know this electronic marvel <clears throat> as, a, as a system uh, that's a voracious user of program material, those things that the audience at home watches. And now and in the past, we have known television as the voracious user of materials vis-a-vis -vis the networks, the three networks and the independent networks and regional networks and sport networks, all using copious amounts of film and tape productions from basically independent suppliers and throw into this all of the efforts of all of the stations in their local programming, such as news and public affairs and the delightful things such as the, the magic window for years and years and years. Okay, this is the television that we've grown up with and that we're, you know, we're seeing now. But the thing that we, as a public, aren't accustomed to yet is what I call the uh, whole new generation of electronic goodies that are lurking around the, the perimeter and some, some of them not around the perimeter, some of them very centrally located in, in the business. Now, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about video cassette recorders, VCRs, the <coughs> Betamax, and isn't, isn't it interesting that right now the, the Walt Disney Productions and some other company are suing Sony for something like 20, well, not for money, really. They're, they're suing they the, to stop. not even to use the Betamax because it's, it's, it's going to allow people to, to record movies and one thing and another and store them or sell them or trade them or whatever they want. Or use them once and erase them and record something else so they can program at a time that they want them to be seen. Yes, but, but it's if, strange. No, but if I have a good movie of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, who wants to erase that, you know? My neighbor can record something else and we'll trade. But uh, more about that a little bit later. Listen, if you're establishing a network, let <clears> me know. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, and there's fiber optics, which is a new way of, uh, of transmitting signals rather than over wire. We're, we're into a whole new generation of capabilities of storing and retrieving information, uh, putting uh, in, an entire encyclopedia on the equivalent of a page and a half. So, so absolutely necessary for libraries of the future. Uh, computerization itself. You might say this is not a new generation of electronics. It, uh, it's not new in, in, in electronics, but it's certainly uh, adaptable in its present form to uh, very high compatibility with television. And uh, 
this thing we talk about, the satellite, being able to receive uh, signals from uh, transmitting points from around the world. Uh, our own radio station will will have will have one within a year within a year, uh, capable of receiving, and we'll also be able to to uplink or to send by satellite. And then we have the thing called cable television. Now these these modes or uh, this apparatus or whatever you want to whatever you want to call it are all products of television electronics. They've all occurred since the since the start of television, and they're all cousins. They're all cousins, and they're all compatible with the television that we know. All highly compatible with the television that we know. And so this brings up uh, an, an interesting aspect that I would like to mention. Uh, currently, it's very camp or very in, or it's the mode to um, be distressed about something about television, be distressed about the serials that the, the, uh, the medium is uh, advertising or um, whatever. So we got all kinds of organizations and individuals that are charging off on white horses and <coughs> going to congressional committees and, and <coughs> just generally being the watchdog. I'm the type of person myself that because I don't think I can stand any more of these barking watchdogs. I can tell my kids what to eat and what to watch and, and whatever else. And you know, Betty Lou, that's something that we've learned about the audience as broadcasters over the years. What they've always said is, folks, you put it on and we'll make the decision about whether we watch it or not. And the amazing thing is the little faith yeah. in <clears throat> the general audience yeah. that the outsiders have but the broadcasters yeah. really do So now they're getting, getting into areas that the general public hasn't become alarmed about yet or where they ultimately will stand up and say, put it on the shelves and we'll make a decision about whether we buy it or not. But anyway, this, th this, uh, this, this, type of, this type of an unrest, this type of a challenge is not bad. I'm not saying that it's bad at all. I'm saying at this particular time it's a little bit, a little bit misdirected and I think it also it, it's... Uh, it's a heck of a waste of time on their part because whereas people are now talking about the quality of programs, talking about the number of commercials within programs, talking about the quality of commercials in terms of the, of the healthfulness of, of the products involved in one thing or another, that it won't be too long until those people that are complaining because their families are watching four hours a day of television or whatever, are going to have an opportunity uh, to watch cable television, to watch home box office, to watch pay television, have two-way access into their home, one in and one out, all thrown into a little box into their living room that's attached to the television set, so they can have programming of all types from 36 channels. Now, <laughs> when, you get, when you get the possible input of, of all of these things, of home box office, the movies, the sporting events, uh, the, uh, the, the, the local channels, uh, all, thrown, all thrown into, into uh, uh, one television set, and you hook a Betamax onto all of this, let's say, and to do the recording when you can't possibly watch, uh, I think maybe instead of watching television four hours a day, if I were average in this particular area, <laughs> I'd have to quit my job so that I, <laughs> so that I could watch so that I could watch exactly. I could watch television all you know watch television all day long, all day long. So you're saying that there, some of these people should be grateful for the warts that television has because make it perfect and it's going to be completely irresistible. Yeah, well, what, I guess what we're saying, Betty, is that it's... Uh, that it's an interesting argument, anyway. Yeah, it's an interesting <laughs> argument. And, and um, I, think, I, think, I think what we're saying is that uh, uh, drastic and radical changes in, in the medium are, are, right, are right around the corner. Uh, the, the developing technologies such as cable, which we've mentioned, and pay television and home box office, 
and uh, the pre-recorded video cassettes will enable the television medium to sidestep the networks. And this is where people are going to have going to have problems, and they'll be able to satisfy all of the tastes of the viewers who aren't being served now. Now, see, home box office, for example, right now can can give you a Las, Las Vegas show review, uh, give you uncensored nightclub routines of uh, uh, such performers as Red Fox and Bette Midler. And interestingly, uh, even George Carlin doing his act with uh, the seven words you supposedly can't say on TV. And for which our engineer who's writing heard on us right now would lose his license if no. we're allowed to go over the air. Okay, so this comes down to the bottom line that says he, evidently uh, you can uh, if you choose the right form of television. And I think this is the key. The television is, is going to change form. And it's going to take the audience, the public, a while to, to become uh, uh, tuned, tuned to this uh, type of thing. And many, many times in the future years, I think people are going to say, well, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be nice to have it like it was in 1977 or 78? We have people now that say, gee, there was good television when WOI-TV had all four networks and did the selecting. Well, it, it wasn't particularly that good. I think it's so, shocking to go back and look at some of those golden days uh, remembrance. Mm. It's, it's nice to remember them in the mind's eye instead of the actual eye because we have come a long way. What we'll be losing, I, I feel, uh, is, is this thing that broadcasters instinctively guard and that is the business of, of being an intermediary uh, for the public, uh, protecting the public's trust and the public ownership of broadcasting. Now, when you get into the exotic, uh, exotic philosophies of cable broadcasting and home box office, pay television and that sort of thing, the public doesn't own anything. And uh, the public will get what it pays for. They'll be surprised, I think, at the cost eventually of uh, what, their, what their entertainment is going, to, is going to cost them. I think they'll be, now I'm talking like a broadcaster, and we're criticized, you see, because we we, we seem to be anti-cable. That's not the point. We're, we're pro-free and open TV. That's what we are. And we just say, remember it as you remember it as you see it now. Okay. What, what you pay for later on is presumably what you want. And if it's what you want, it's what you pay for, fine. The two, the two will, come, will come together. But I think a broadcaster, especially a person that has been in the business for many, many years, probably clutches up a little bit at this because you can see that the money interest in investment is following, is following the fast horses, which is cable, and that's ultimately where the money is. That is not the same type of television as the networks as we know them now that are willing to risk and invest, for example, $16 million, $16 million in a series called Roots. And I don't think you're going, to, you're going to find very, very many of those, very, very many of those things, because <coughs> It's, it's indigenous uh, that uh, cable will, will live, off of, live off of the available, uh, the available product. If the available product isn't all that good, then that's what's going to come into the homes. There's, there's an interesting bit of information that I picked up. The Getty Oil Company, Mr. Getty has a few dollars, you know, and, um, yes, and you pay for all, yes. you know a nickel for all the phone calls you make when you're in this house too. That's how he got it, I'm told. Yes, <laughs> he yeah. saved. Yes, he yeah, saved he his has nickels. It, yes. Well, uh, that money, for example, had just acquired 85 uh, percent of a, a network called Entertainment and Sports Programming Network, and it's based in Bristol, Connecticut. And they plan to begin full time all sports programming in the fall of 1979. Now, the sports coverage will highlight NCAA events via satellite onto cable. Now, that if you can get that onto satellite, you can get that onto every cable installation in the country. I think the thing that, that we have to notice here is that they have come to an agreement with the NCAA for the rights to 18 uh, different uh, championships of NCAA sporting events. Now, this, of course, does not include the major 
sporting events such as football or, or such as basketball because the, the free television networks now have those tied up for maybe four or five years. But wait till that sixth <clears throat> season. Yes, wait till the sixth, wait till the sixth season. And um, you might be watching the, you might be watching the Rose Bowl for four dollars, I don't know. But uh, <clears throat> definitely see that. And uh, frankly, if that's the way it is, that's you know that's that's the way the public is the public is going to take it. But uh, I think if we're going to talk want to talk futures of futures of television, talk futures of communications broadly because this it's a whole new ball game and it's into so many of so many of what I'll call the electronic cousins that that have been spawned have been spawned by by television electronics. And uh, well, you can take this all the way back to World War II and radar and sonar, or, you know. Or, or we can take it all the way back to your first newscast, yeah, which, which involved <laughs> driving eight miles out in the country <laughs> yes. with Baloptican uh, slides to use. Yeah, right. Isn't it amazing that in that amount of time, the thousands or well, it must be close to millions of hours that have been that have been produced and that people have watched. Some have watched more than others. But it's the same. This, it's the same medium that has produced the Gong Show, yeah. and is now in the pro process of producing all of Shakespeare's plays. It's the same set that showed us Walking on the Moon, mm -hmm. or a little robbery or an accident on a local freeway. Amazing. I hate Amazing. to toss this in, but I doubt very seriously that any cable company will ever produce a series of Shakespeare's plays. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's for such a it'd be for such a small audience that only free television can afford to do those things. But um, but still in or all or public or public television. Yes, public yes. television. The kind of grants that that have been yes. have been forthcoming. Mm. Any other words about what you think the future is going to hold besides the question of where do we work tomorrow? Because um, <laughs> if not, I have I have a last question I'd like to ask you. Well, why don't you ask that last okay. question? Okay. If we were putting together a, a reflective reel of scenes or shows and we wanted to represent some of the best moments that television has produced as far as involving the viewer, which is its basic purpose, what are some of the things that you'd include other than, say, walking on the moon, which we would have to say is, you know, isn't that a fantastic thing to have been part of? Yes, it's a fantastic thing to have been part of. Uh, I, have, I have one thing that sticks out in my mind more than walking on the moon. Uh, maybe I'm uh, disclosing myself as what they may say as an unscientific person, but that's not that's not true at oh, all. What else this, is me you? <laughs> this medium is a very is a very scientific medium. Uh, you, you you deal in this business very very long, and you. Uh, you would have to say walking on the moon entirely possible because anything is possible in this in this electronic age. We see it happening in television all the time. It, marvelous engineering and you, you know, name it and you've got it. See, but but if you want to come right if you want to come right down to something the television has done that is a, was of more importance and had more of an impact on on people and their lives. It was the McCarthy hearings. I'd have to buy. Yeah, that's. Yep. Well, that was the. That was the first. And they didn't really spend any million dollars doing it. They no. just walked right into the, with permission, of course, walked into the committee rooms and said, "Okay, folks, we're going to carry this to the American people." And they carried <clears> it <throat> without anyone standing in the middle saying, "Take that mm -hmm. scene and we'll cut this and and put this." It was there. The way it is, not the way someone mm. is is telling us it is or reflecting it through through their own personalities. Just there it is. But you know, talking about the the, the space shots and 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 the man on the moon, uh, they could never have proved to me that that a man walked on the moon if it hadn't been for television. But you realize the thing I mean, that they never say about that is that we saw the foot going down because the camera was there. The camera Not was that there, the right. camera came <laughs> right. down, you know, somehow in his hands <laughs> or whatever. The camera was there and then we saw the foot. Mm -hmm. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. It's been fun to be part of it. It's uh it's been more than it's been more than fun, Betty. It uh, have we changed many lives? Murrow sa Edward R. Murrow says that we won't know for fifty years how we changed them. Interestingly, I was thinking about this uh, the other morning. Uh, 
when I was sort of reflecting on 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 this particular segment of the show. Uh, it's time now. It's time now for somebody to take on uh, an evaluation and an appraisal of people of certain ages okay. to see if 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 my children, for example, in those in their thirties who who were were caught into television at a at um, as a part of their life uh, have turned out any have turned out any differently than than people who have uh, who are say forty years old who who uh, weren't caught up with that that much television. In other words, the formative years were pretty pretty well gone before they uh, before television came along. That can be that can be done now. I mean, they can get into all kinds of things. I mean, our uh, a higher percentage of them bank robbers that that raised, were raised on television as opposed to those that weren't, or a higher percentage of them divorced, or a higher percentage of them dying of heart attacks because of the cereals they're eating. And uh, yes, it's time. I can't answer the question. I don't know, but it's my observation. I don't see that much difference in people. Mm -hmm. I don't see that much difference in people. I think that I think that if we want to talk about intellect. And, and awareness, there's no, there's, there's no comparison at all. No comparison at all to the kids in, in school now as compared to uh, 25 years ago. There is absolutely no, no. comparison. None. None. Not a, none at all. The teachers, of course, teachers, of course, say this. But now whether this is, whether this is, this is good or whether this is the way it's supposed to have been, I don't know. But uh, uh, those are answers we're going to get later on, I, I'm, I'm sure. And going back with the last word to the uh, cartographers lying on the edge of the maps when they, in Columbus's day and before when they, they didn't know what happened beyond a certain point that had been charted, they put here be dragons. Yeah, and so that's yeah, sort of like be. television. <laughs> you know, we don't know what the future is, here be dragons. Some may be real, some may not. We'll just have to wait and see. We will wait and see. Thank you very much. Been fun to this point. <laughs>